Hi and welcome back to my workshop. I'm Tony and as you know I'm trying to build another tank. This time is the M26 Persian tank from Armatech, another 1 to 6 scale full metal kit. And where we left off in the last session we'd built the hull up, we'd assembled all of the hull parts, we'd put the bogies on the deck um, and it was reasonably straightforward, one or two little sort of things that we had to get through but nothing major. And so this session it's all about the suspension system and the torsion bar system. And actually, I, I was quite relieved because I've read the instructions and, and in compared to the Tiger that I built previously, it's really straightforward. Because I don't know if you remember, but the Tiger, the torsion bars, two, two things with the torsion bars. One, it was, it was one, there was two different diameters. It was a 5mm and a 5.5mm. And if you got them in the wrong positions, it had a fundamental impact on how the, uh, the Tiger performed, or the suspension system performed. The other thing was that they had to be set at a certain angle. Um, and that was tricky, but we got around that. On this system, it's really straightforward. Armatech have done all the work for you. So effectively, you assemble these as per the instructions and install them onto the hull. They'll be perfectly aligned for, for the wheels when the wheels go on. So I've gone ahead and made one just to see how complex it was. And it was really straightforward, actually. The only thing I had, and by the way, I've marked this up. And the reason why I've done that is that there are 12 of these. Um, and there are two types of assembly, A and B. And then in, as part of that, you have a left-handed and a right-handed. And you have to be careful to make sure that you assemble them correctly. So this is a left-handed, and it's going to go, it's a left-handed part A or assembly part A, and it's going to go in the number six position. So I've just put that on the shaft because when these are painted, I'll mask this off so I don't get any paint on that, paint this. And then at least I will not forget the, the position that this corresponds with on the hull. So the only problem I had, really simple solution to it, was this torsion bar here. Um, they're all the same, all 12 are exactly the same, um, exactly the same diameter. The only problem is, is I guess when they guillotine the end here, um, it's slightly, I think it may just have an effect on or splay the material, the metal this end. So it doesn't actually fit into the hole on the opposite side of the receptor hole, if you like, on the opposite side of the hole. Very simple solution, just on my bench grinder, I just took the edges off both sides of that on both ends, and they go in perfectly. So that's about the only, if you like, little bit of fab or fettling you need to do on these. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna reset the camera, and I'm gonna assemble these in real time for, I'll probably do about two or three in real time, and then the rest I'll speed up. Um, and we'll get cracking. I'm not going to install them today. I'm just going to assemble them because I'm going to get ready for painting um, sort of after I've built these. So I'll set the camera up and I'll be back very shortly. Right, so we're just about ready to go. So I've already cleaned up the edges of the torsion bar itself just to make life a little bit easier passing through the, the hole. I will show you at the end of this session um, how they go into the hole, but we'll get on and cra we'll crack on and assemble these. So a couple of things that I just, well, just one note to start with. So this torsion bar fits into this shaft here. Uh, what I've done is I've, I've measured the, I've, I've put it in and if you like, just tested, test fitted it so that I get a similar kind of, um, you can see that there's a, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's a, a flat surface to this, which is here. And that's been ground down so that when it positions itself either in this shaft here or in the receptacle hole, the other end of the hole, um, it can only go in one way. And there's three grub screws, little M5 grub screws that you lock tight into this position. And then that fixes that torsion bar firmly in position. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I had an equal length of flat side of the bar. So I just tested it and I just marked it with my permanent marker. I don't know if that's actually showing up on, on here, but that gives me, that just allows me to line that up perfectly. So this is how I'm gonna go ahead and do it. So I'm just gonna position that there I'm then gonna prepare, I've got my first of the grub screws with the, I'll get the right alum key. Bit of thread locker on that. Just double check before I go into final fish, make sure it's got the flat surface in there and it really does and it's about where I want it. And then just send that home nice and tight again don't over tighten it what i'll probably do is i'll just use this other allen key here just because it's got it i get a bit more of a grip on it and just give that a grip but don't over tighten in case you ruin the head of the, the little grub screw <clears throat> and we'll go again 
So there's three of these little M5 grub screws on here. And absolutely make sure that you use your thread locker to fix these in position. I was so relieved when I started reading the instructions for this because I, I, you know, as I said, I mean, I, I know I've built my Tiger, but you know, this is a this feels like a completely, in a way, a different journey. Um, but you know, I think I said in my last session that the more I'm getting into this, the more, the closer I feel to how have the understanding of how I'm going to build this tank. And and it's weird. I know it's an inanimate object, but you do grow a connection with it. Any model builder will tell you as you assemble your model, whether it's a kit or scratch built you, you form a connection with it it's it's an odd thing but it does it does happen so that's them in there nice and tight just uh wipe off the excess of the thread locker so that's the first part done um and that's th that this will di if you like di dictate the position of the wheels and the angle um so the next part is I have one of these suspension arms. Now I have um, cleaned these up prior to working on them. So I've just given them a degrease. They're all nice and clean. Um, and this simply just, you offer this into the back of this. You see that? And you, all you've got to do is make sure you align the hole in this shaft with the hole in the suspension arm. And that does go in. And then you line those up you can see that on the camera I'm not sure if you can see that but now you've got that's positioned perfectly um, you and then you have uh, a if you like a locking washer here and you have an M5 countersunk 10 mil fixing now I'm just going to pop that in for now. I'm not going to tighten this up. I'm just going to position that in there. Keep my larger Adam key for that. But I'm not tightening it up too much because I want to get these 12 mil grub screws or these. I think they're 12. Yeah, 12 mil grub screw. Big old boys. It there, don't you see that? And there's two of these, top and one top and bottom. And you've got to drive them in so they meet in the middle. And that goes. That's it, it's starting to go now. So I'm just going to send that home so it's just flush for now. Load up my next one. that one in and they do go in with relative ease now I'm just gonna work both sides to bring them together making sure that this is a close fit before we send them home completely and I'm going to get these in there nice and tight. Use the right size key. I do love these these ones because you get a really good grip. Um, I know I've only watched that little video I did about the tools, but they're fantastic, these. No stress on that whatsoever. That's wonderful. And then, last but not least, we'll just send that screw home. Now, there is a little bit of play on these. I'm a little bit sort of pedantic about things like this. I want this to look centered on here. So I'm going to hold this, if you like, as center as possible because it does move around a bit. So I want that to look center when it's fixed. And it doesn't actually find its dead center unless you do this. Again, if I use the right Allen key, be good. There we go. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So that's that part done. Really couldn't be easier. 
Look at that. Right. So the next part is this what they call the EVO202, which is the wheel axle. Beautifully made bit of mild steel. And that goes in the opposite side. Now, these are going in ever so well. Too good, actually. Um, so that's gone in there really nice. Now, I'm, I'm going to undo that again. All I've done is really just sort of to test that. So I know that goes in there really nicely. So that's going to need some thread locker on it. But again, because... The stress that these tanks go through when you're driving them and the weight you imagine the terrain that we drive these things over and the vibration and everything else so you really do need to be careful when you're building at this stage to make sure there's enough of this thread locker on so now that's I'm just, I'm just doing this by hand there's no need to use any tools and would you believe it now we go it becomes awkward <laughs> There we go. But I think it's important if you just wind these in first before you put the thread locker on to make sure that they do fit and that's really nicely tight up against that. And then we have a, a little M4 rub screw that is required just to lock that off. This needs to be really nice tight fit so hopefully that can that kind of uh, do that again. Ah, that's it nice and tight <clears throat> and that is it as simple as that and the only thing I'm going to do now is decide that these these particular uh, this first set of three is the if you're, if you're doing this build, it's actually on page four of the Armour Tech instructions. So these are all the left-hand side, assembly A, and they go into positions two, five, and six. So I'm gonna mark this one up, as I did before. I'm gonna mark it on this. Just give that a wipe over. And this shaft here. And I'm gonna go, it's just gonna be a five, a left-handed, and it's assembly A. And again, so when that's painted, I'll mask this off. And when I take the masking tape off, this is a permanent marker, so that will stay on there. Um, so I don't forget where I am. And I've already marked, I don't know if you noticed on the session yesterday, I've already marked the positions on the bogies for these. So hopefully I have no problems whatsoever. So I'll, um, I'll just go on and do this one again, again in real time. And then I'm going to speed the whole thing up to do all the other ones. Um, and then right at the end of it, I'll just talk you through how these, how, the intention of how these go onto the tank. So I'll park that one up there and we'll go again. So I'm just going to have to come out of camera while I grind the, so excuse me, I'll be back in a sec. So the guys building the, um, the M26 and following me, um, I'm really enjoying the interaction with you guys. Um, and I hope you're enjoying the build as much as I am. And I really am. Now that I've got my head around it and um, we've started it, I, you know, I'm, I'm relishing building this. I mean, when I turn the pages of this um, instruction manual, and the further you go, the scarier it is. But I guess as you get down to that point, it sort of get, you, your confidence builds. But it is double scary looking at them. But don't be put off by that because as you build, as I said, your confidence grows and um, and it becomes less less um what's the word um well scary scary is good so let's just put these in and then we'll move on my son might even decide to speed this whole thing up 
I mean, th there is a lot of tasks um, on building a tank like this that are very repetitive. Because, you know, you've got, on this particular thing, you've got 12 wheels, and then you've got the other wheels, the, the, the ones that run along the top. I think there's possibly 10 of those. So you're doing a lot of repetitive tasks. Um, and and the, the danger of doing repetitive tasks is that, yes, you feel confident as you grow on, but you also you can also just get carried away and make mistakes because you just get, you think you're into autopilot, but it's very easy to sort of... Yeah, you know, overlook and make some mistakes. So, yeah, always double check, stop um, if you're not sure. Just, just it's always worth just checking um, randomly as you're going through the build. I can actually see there's a bit of swarf in there. That's all. Well, that's good because it's it, you can get you can get distracted. Would be the right word, I guess. So just. Just gonna pop that in. The only reason I'm doing this is it thread locker. See what I mean? You get carried away. You forget things. I'm really getting excited about it, just thinking about um, you know accessorizing this tank, and and, I've, and I'll show you um, what I've ordered. You know, I've ordered the machine gun that goes on the top from Armor Packs, and I'll show you that in another session. And it, it's just lovely, just just a beautiful piece of kit. You don't get that with Armor Armor Tech. They obviously they give you plenty of uh, elements for the tank, but I guess they like you to you know to um, to accessorize it so it, it, it makes it personal to you and how how the tank looks at the end so that's just to line those up <clears throat> and these sort of parts of the build i know i do i do go on a bit and i'm sorry about that but i warned you about that in the very very first video i did for the tiger but these parts of the builder i just find really relaxing because you're in a, you know, you're on a roll. Um, you, you know, you 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 got permission to spend time in your workshop from, you know, the boss. Um, the weather's rotten. Uh, what you're going to do is again, as um, as I keep saying, there's naff all on the telly. Um, but you know, having something like this to pass the hours on a day that really there's not much happening, I just find really relaxing. And then when I'm speaking to camera, I don't have the radio on because I, you know, obviously get into all sorts of trouble with that. But um, I love just when I'm getting getting into the swing of things and just, you know, doing these, doing these repetitive tasks, having the radio on um, able, enables me to just sort of, you know, get, you know, just drift off into my own little world. Before I tighten those up, I'm just going to wind that in a bit. That's better. It's nice and tight up against that. My son thinks I'm mad. I talk to myself a lot when I'm building, but I'm not. It's only because I've got the camera on. I promise you, when I'm not when I'm not filming, um, I don't talk to myself because <laughs> um, th that would be really really worrying. So again, I'm just going to test fit this before I put the thread locker on it, and that goes in there lovely. Again, I, mean, I think they've made improvements um, because when I was doing the Tiger, and I'm going on about the Tiger again, but when I was doing the Tiger, I had a nightmare with this this part because um, it's just the threading. Uh, there was a lot of cleaning up to do, um, and I almost had to. I did consider tapping the hole again, but I got round it by just a bit of brute force um, and using my bench vice. So that's going in there. in there nice and in the final part you'd be pleased to hear get the right get the right tool is this little m4 grub screw
That has been the most satisfying 20 minutes <laughs> I've had on this build. Just really, 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 really pleased with that. So I'm just going to clean this up and we'll mark this up. And this is going to be um, this is going to be position two, left hand, and assembly A. And that's it. Could not be simpler. Thank you, Armatech. Right, so let's go on to the next one. So we have left hand suspension arm assembly B this time. And it says just make two identical assemblies used to be used on the left hand side positions three and four so again we'll come and mark this up the thing to note here is the ones that we previously built which are the assembly a ones that go on the left hand side and this one it's like spot the difference um, i'll make it nice and easy for you the ones we've just assembled on the a side has got this threaded hole here whereas these do not. And I understand that this is to do with the shock absorber at some point connecting to this, whereas these don't. You still use the same shaft, exactly the same shaft as before, just with the very simple three grub hole, uh, sort of holes for the grub screws, but make sure, now these are packed in the same bag as the shock, shock, shock absorber outer casings. So they, they, are, they are packed and they are easy to find, but just a note, just so that, um, again when you get it you know you don't get carried away um, and just think that they're the same they're not they're, they're they're uniquely different so so that's it i'll um probably speed up the rest of this process Right, so we're now going to go on to build the next three suspension arms and torsion bar, um, which are the first three on the right hand side. And again, very clearly labelled on the instructions. The only difference here is that we are going back to this same suspension arm, the, the, the same as the, the first three we made with the, with the sort of threaded hole here, which I think is the, the shock absorber. Um, but this time the shaft is different. This one is identified, if you look at the two together, don't get it comes out of the camera, but on this side, these are the ones that we've been with for the first five suspension arm systems, we've used these with the three grub screws uh, holes here. I'll put that away. With the next three, we're asked to use these ones with the two little dimples. Quite why, I don't know yet, but I'm sure that will become apparent. But so just make sure when you come to this page, the page number six, if you're following the arm protection instructions, you use, you pull out these ones here with the little, the little dimples in. And then and that's it. Everything else should be exactly the same. I've already gone ahead and um, ground down the ends of these rods and I've tested them in the hole and they do fit. So the next three of these will be sped up because it's exactly the same process.
So that's it. That's the first of the 10, five either side, left and right, all assembled. That leaves us just one uh, to go, one more on each side, left and right, but this is a slightly different um, assembly, and I've gone ahead and made up the left-hand side, as they call it in the instructions. So it's pretty much the same. Uh, we have the sort of the, 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 the shaft that we've got, the torsion bar, which we've talked about. This is a slightly different fitting, um, but it is clearly labeled up uh, in, in the bag, and it comes in the same bags packed with two of these, plus the two little link arms here. The only thing of note really, and I will build the next one in real time, is that there's a, a pin that goes through here, not just here, and this is packed in the same bag as the idler wheel pin. Um, but this is the shorter of the two, and it's just the right size to be able to pass through the, you know, the, the, the this here and the actual linkage as well. So if you're wondering that, if you out of the two, you're wondering which one, it's the shorter of the two. So we'll go ahead now and I'll build the next one in real time. But before I do that, I'll just mark this up so I know where we are. So this is this is left hand position one. Um, yeah, that's all I need on this one, I think. Yeah, position one, left hand. I'll just do that both sides. Park that up. So we have this little shaft, this little linkage. We have the last of our sort of suspension shafts. I have the last of the torsion bar, which I've already ground down. And we've got our fixings and we've got this little pin here. Here, sorry. Right, so same same, um, same deal as the last time. Just mark that, I've marked that. So this goes on. As before, just usual lock tight, you know, thread locker. So actually, these um, the assembly of these torsion bars has been so much easier compared to uh, the Tiger. Um, and again, massive thanks to Armatech for actually making life really easy on this. Um, and it's something that if you haven't built one of these tanks before the thought of doing it I guess is worse than the actual you know actual you know completing it the task itself the practical side of things so I mean I'm just going on what I've said before following the instructions very carefully um, and so far I've made no mistakes apart from dropping a few fixings and but that's just normal but yeah, so far, no mistakes. And I've really, really enjoyed this part of the build. I mean, we've got a long way to go on the suspension system, but as far as I'm, all I want to do in this session really is just get the torsion bars and the assembly complete. And we'll go on and talk about the next stage shortly. Um, so the only difference with this, well, there's no difference really, is exactly the same process of, you know, getting this into the, into the sh shaft, lining that up, putting the fixing in the back. We've got the, the washer, if you like. This M5 fixing here. Again, once the camera's on, just, just don't know what it is makes things a little bit awkward but we're through this now this is the last one just make sure that's lined up and it is the last of the two longer grub screws seem to be going through quite a lot of thread locker um, I think it's probably just this stage of the build but yeah, I've got a full bottle I started with, so we'll see how we get on. That's just needs loosening at the end there to be able to that find its way through. Okay. 
classic. Got this side. And that's it. Don't give up. If you if things like that go wrong, just you know, just um persevere. I'll just keep an eye on that. That's um tight, but we'll see how we get on. This could be the first challenge of the day. No, that's all right now. Disaster averted. So, almost there with this. And it's quite nice actually because although um, the torsion bars are fairly repetitive, um, the way they break it up on the assembly, you know, you're doing three of each type, two of each type, and then these, it doesn't feel like it's a, a monotonous, long, lengthy process. Just, I like to have the, the right drawing up in front of me just to make sure I'm doing everything as should. Now, um, one thing that I found on the previous one is that this pin uh, didn't go through this that well at all and you can see on here I've got a similar kind of that's actually gone through there but that's that's a little bit tight there so i'm just gonna just using this deburring tool it's probably not the right tool but it, it seemed to have worked on the last one it just takes that little bit off i just want to make sure that that passes through there there we go that passes through there beautifully now And also want to make sure that it goes through this little link here. That's a bit tight. Oh, that is tight. And I want it to be loose. So we'll just give that, just work that a little bit. Great tool, this. And I'll just have a circular file. It'll just, uh, just so happens to be the perfect diameter. Not, I'm not going mad, just very lightly. No, that's it lovely that passes through lovely now I want I want this to swing freely so if it's tight in there that wouldn't that wouldn't work right so that's that's okay now this goes in with the angle pointing towards the main shaft of the torsion bar and I'm just double checking the, the drawing as I speak just to make sure I'm, I'm not talking nonsense this then presents itself from the back And then out. Yeah, you can see that. So that's in. And if you're not sure, just check the drawing. You know, it's pretty pretty much perfectly aligned with what the drawing suggests. Then we have this sort of what they call a half nut. It's probably what I've been called occasionally, actually. Um, now I'm going to be very careful. I am going to put thread locker in this, but I'm only going to put it on the front. I don't want it um, seeping into you know the, the sleeve and then just ever so just ever so gently holding the flat side of the pin I want to try and get this threaded on you know what it's it's mad as soon, seriously as soon as the cat oh here we go as soon as the camera comes on it just doesn't want to play so I'm just going to tighten that up hand tight and that's it and that's it doing its thing so nice and easy nothing else to do on that and that's the last of the torsion bars so I'm just going to mark that up and that's right so this is the right hand one position one and that's it all done 
So what I'll do is I'll just um, clear all this away and I'll do a, a final piece to camera. So I'll be back very shortly. Thank you. So that's all the suspension arms and torsion bars now assembled. Um, really pleased how these have gone today. Um, and obviously the next step will be to install them. But ahead of that, I will be painting. I'll be masking up the metal parts, all the steel parts and the axles here and then painting everything else. So that they, when they go onto the tank, um, like I've just, I've just dry fitted one here just to show you, and the how it connects into the opposite hole over here. Um, so that obviously that just comes sliding out, very easy. So I've got to make, I've got to try and understand before I go ahead and do any more work. I'm just going to go through the instructions um, and just understand how much more I can assemble onto the tank hull. That I then I can paint rather than having to paint the hole and then having to come back and for instance these bump stops I'll definitely pr pretty sure I'm going to be putting these on the hole before I do any more painting so there could be a bit more build before I start the painting but we're not far off doing the painting I don't want to start you know get all the, the paint out and priming and everything else and just do one element I want to try and do as much as possible I will of course have to come back um, and you know do do with it another time um, but you know going forward you can just see the you know the sort of the complexity of this tank really smart really really looking forward to this just these little shock absorbers and and have it and, and what have you and you know the idler wheel I mean that is it scary maybe not I don't know I'm sure once I get through to that point I'll be happy so that's it for today uh, really pleased with that just a decent building session all the torsion bars are built the suspension bars and systems are built um, I think it's about right for a day a building session. Um, if you try and do much more than that, I think you just get fed up with it and uh, maybe just get a bit, you know, impatient. Uh, one thing I did find today was this book, really useful. Uh, this is the book I went through briefly on my, you know, what tools you're going to need video. Um, and I found it helpful because, you know, I was just trying to work out the position of the, the suspension arms and is it right the way, not doubt an armor tech for one minute, but just as a cross reference, and it clearly is. I mean, it's amazing because when I'm looking at this book, I can see the components that Armatech have built and it's just so true to accuracy. It's just so good. Um, but I, you know, if you haven't already gone and got yourself one, go and get out you know, a book like that. You'll find it tremendously helpful. I also like looking ahead in the instructions, trying to see the next part of the build, if there is any more I can build before I start thinking about painting. And there is. There'll be some bump stops to put on the hull and things like that. And I checked against this reference book just to see if they would be the same colour and they are. So um that's it i um i've really thoroughly enjoyed i really appreciate you continuing to follow me and if you've just joined please subscribe thumbs up and i'll see you really soon thank you